My first introduction to the Moon Gundam was watching an unbox video by Mecha Gaikotsu. And after that, something struck a chord with me. I knew there was something special about the high grade Moon Gundam because I was a master grade only collector. But high grade Moon Gundam garnered my interest. Till today, in my eye, I call this the best high grade. My opinion, of course. Salutations, fellow hobbyists, and welcome to my second wow. review video. Before I begin, I just want to show you how we do reviews here in the Toyama Tometri Hobby Channel. To find the verdict, I look at the build, the features, and likability factor, and give each a 1 to 10. With that, let's dive in to the build. Overall, I do enjoy the build. But let's go into some detail. The yellow part on the shoulder armor will slide in and is loose. I suggest gluing it. If you poke it in, it will fall in. And to put it back into place means dismantling the whole pauldron and putting it back together. The feet are static, but the way it comes together is genius. The white piece here holds the purple piece in the frame, sort of locks them into place. One little nitpick for the soles of the feet is it's not flush. You see that? Do you guys have this problem or is it supposed to just be like this? Now the arms are also a joy to assemble. They hide the seam line well with this piece here that's white. Nice details to let the inner frame peek through. Hands are swappable, five hands to choose from, too close, too open, in a spread out manner to mimic the front box art. They're not holding anything, but they are my favorite pair for this guy. Speaks of how special this kit is. And one gun holding hand on the right side, so can't hold the rifle on the left. You can, but you know, looks off. They put a lot of attention to hiding the seam lines in this kit. Example, the shoulder armor. The main seam line is covered by the wow. purple part. The butterfly edges hangs in the forearm. It's a snug fit. Nothing really to lock it in there. But it's secure. It won't fall off unless you wear down the sides that hold the edges in. Now talking about the cycle plates, they are a softer, flexible mat material compared to the action base which is harder and more brittle you know not as flexible so snaps easier the cycle plates are cool easy to put together you think they are the same but only two are alike and each of them are different i cut them all out of the runners and i can still identify the pieces to put together also the back of the plates have crazy details a panel line joy. Wow. Only down is the yellow vents needs to be painted. Again, optional. The part that links the backpack to the cycle plates works as it is strong to support the weight of the plates. But it's nice they give you an additional pre-posed one. I usually don't like the pre-posed one. I usually go for the real deal. But in this case, I was happy with the pre-post arm. Shows they made it well. And also this kit does not have poly caps. Usually a mark of a great master grade. But in this case, a great high grade. This right here, this two red marks needs to be painted in. Again, optional. Building the legs were fun. Usually they get you to build both legs in tandem, but here, both legs are different, yet it didn't feel repetitive. I guess it's because it's a satisfying build. Nothing really hollow, nothing tedious. And the double knee shifting armor gimmick, mmm, genius. You see some inner details as they shift. Ooh, awesome. And those details will stand out if you paint them. The side boosters are strange. Up here is a hinge, but trying to pull it out, they don't really pull out very far. So I think it's not meant to be articulate. Yeah, I'm confused. Working on the waist unit, half of it is the gray inner frame, 
Amazing that it's got the various hip movement. Also, they have a posability in the chest that goes extreme forward to make up for the ab crunch. I don't like the hollow parts on the back skirt, but you won't see them once you put it on. There are areas where I use black panel line instead of grey to follow the line art. Good tip there. Now there is a bad seam line on the lower back. It's not that bad actually. I just notice it because everything else is good. But you won't notice it so much also because of the psycho plates and other stuff that goes around the abdomen area. The yellow part on the chest is a little hard to pen line, hard for the ink to reach when you're using a regular Gundam marker. I recommend if you use the pore type, it would work better. Now the head, seems a lot of work to get it to look like this. No guide to the red lines, so I have to scribe it in myself. Some areas are white and need to be painted grey, like the sides of the cheeks and the Vulcan, and for the Saikomu veins, that needs painting too. For the eyes, if you use the green part or clear part, I still recommend painting around the eyes to frame or highlight the eyes. And if you use the clear, it will appear red unless you paint them, which I did. The safety nubs on the antenna are hard to cut off. I almost damaged mine, so be careful. So all in all, the build was great. There is no other kit like this in high grade, but Vargil. It does not come with stickers, however there are areas that need painting, which are the two marks here, the yellow on the back of the cycle plates, and most details on the head. But even if you don't add those details, this kit looks phenomenal. So with that, I give the build a 9.5 out of 10. That is how much I enjoyed building this kit. Now let's dive into the features. It comes with a clear action base. Action base is smoke clear, so it's the harder plastic. So nub marks are hard to get rid of to hide them. The beam tomahawk is made out of two different parts, so two tones. They could just leave it to be one piece, but that extra effort shows the care that went into this high grade. Building a high grade, some parts are small and small surface details that sometimes I mistake for nub marks, so beware to make sure they're actually nub before cutting them and not extra detail. I also noticed that they seem to have a type of gate that helps guide the nippers. I don't know if this is true or if I'm just looking too deep into this, but it looks like my nippers fit nicely like this. See? See? Now let's talk about the beam rifle. Two pieces slapped together, but extremely molded to minimize the seam line. If you never built one before and I show this to you, you have to take a few moments to notice it. Do you see the seam line? You see it yet? Here, see it now? There are these gimmicks on the back of the legs that I don't think are thrusters. I think they are air brakes, but I love details like that. Now even though the shoulder armor are big, the arms can reach higher because of this hinge. Now it's also compulsory for a flying Gundam to have the feet be able to point down. This one can't point down, but you can rotate ankles to do this. Beam Tomahawk can be stored in the back. It looks strange though from the front. There is so much details on this kit and two tones to the white. It's awesome. Do you see the two tones? Here, how about now? See it? The cycle plates, I love the crescent design. And you can change it to whatever you can make out of them, but I'm not that creative. Mine's a bit flappy. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like this. Comment below if yours is the same. Mine's flappy because of a gimmick I added to it. I like this effect. Seeing how the beam floats over, that's neat. The variable hip movement is easy to use. Just move it like such. And this kit is quite a poseable kit. Often big chunky looking kits are a brick, not this guy, no. There are a few things that are confusing for me like the side thrusters on the legs, you can pop it 
up like such, but I wonder if I'm supposed to. Is it a gimmick? I'm not sure. Another cool note is that it can carry all its armaments on it, and I like that. Always give a bonus to kids who can do that. I must say the gimmicks for this kit is very nice. The one thing that I dislike is the locking gimmick to hold the plates it can be a bit difficult to work with because you don't know if you have it in the right hole until you attach them in. And because of that, I give the features a 9 out of 10. Now let's go to the likability factor. Before building it, I gave this kit a 7. When I was building it, it went up to an 8. Now that it's done, I give it a 9. I usually don't care for high grade because I find high grade small, but this guy's on the bigger side, especially with its back cycle plate. I also find that this is a high grade that is almost real grade, so that's wow. value for money. And if you find that this high grade is much more pricier compared to others, don't worry. It's worth its MSRP. What prevents me from giving this a 10 is because I had to do a bit of painting to get it accurate. Before I began, I thought I was just going to paint the head veins and the red on the legs. It didn't occur to me to paint the back of the cycle plates, those yellow marks. And I thought, oh, no big deal. Just mix some yellow paint, paint them. No, because they're small and I don't want to mask them. I took a long time to paint them. And after I was done, it didn't look as nice until I pan a line over them. It's not a major problem, just that process knocked the likability off for me a little. You might not have the same issue. So that and the neck. If he looks up, you see the ball joint. And in standard mode, to hide it, you do this. Push the head back all the way. And as I was saying, there are two tones to the white. Can you see it? How about now? Yeah, I know I mentioned a few things over and over, but that shows I like this kit so much. I lose my train of thoughts. So, I said I gave it a 9, right? No, after making this video and scripting this thing, I gave it a 9.5. So let's look at the final rating. So 9.5 for the build, a 9 for the features, and a 9.5 for the likability factor. And we get 812 over 1000 for the verdict. In other words, this high grade is lunacy. It's crazy the effort Bandai put into this high grade, really making it special. High grades like this comes out once in a blue moon, and I recommend this to any level of builders. I have never heard of any hobbies complain about the Moon Gundam, which means all who get it are dancing in the moonlight. Sorry for all the puns. Wow. Now, after making this video, to me, it still stands out as the best high grade. No, it's not perfect. No kit is. I'm sure there are other kits that you can come up with that are better than this. If you know of any, please comment below. I want to know. What's your favorite high grade kit? Often, when they make a high grade, I wait for a master grade version, but I think I am happy with the Moon Gundam just being a high grade. Would be nice to get a master grade though, sure, why not? But guys, thanks for watching, and guys, keep things awesome, keep the hobby going, and keep the hobbyists alive. I am Toyama23, signing out.